What is up, hackers? Welcome back to another episode of Hack Crypto, where we hack all of our Web3 education. If you guys are brand new here, slap a like on this video if you like Web3, and be subscribed with notifications on if you want to learn everything there is at the base layer. And on this episode, I'm going to be going over Polygon. Polygon is a layer two scaling solution on top of Ethereum. Ethereum being the L1 and Polygon being the L2. If you guys have heard of that, it just stands for layer two. And what that means is they're trying to be the value layer on the internet. And it is a reduction dramatically in fees and the speed of the chain is dramatically faster to get transactions done. So not only are you getting transactions settled faster, but you're also paying less to get them done. There's a couple other competitors out there. I made a video on the channel recently with layer twos like Arbitrum and Optimism, but ultimately Polygon is my favorite. As a disclaimer, I do hold a bag of Polygon in half for many years. I got to meet the founders in 2019. They launched Matic in 2017, I believe. There were three co-founders and I got to meet them at NFT NYC. And in New York City, I met them at the conference. They were really great guys, very smart, savvy guys. And that was initially when I got involved uh, with the project on a small scale, and they have grown dramatically since. More recently, they announced their ZK rollup, which just stands for zero knowledge, and it is a way to reduce transaction fees is just the simplest way to put that. It's a technology used to reduce what you're paying when you transact on Polygon. So what is new with Polygon that I'm talking about today? It is the step down of one of the co-founders and the council. So what this is, is like 3D, 4D chess. On October 4th this year, JT Kanani, the co-founder of Polygon, stepped down from the day to day. And this was a bit of a surprise to a lot of people. So what's important to note here with JNT stepping back from it, and he said after kickstarting Polygon in 2017, around six months back. So he's saying that it was more at the beginning of 2023, he stepped away from the day-to-day -day, day -day grind to start working on other projects. And he's gonna be contributing from the sidelines. So why this is interesting and why this is compelling is this happened in October. Now, fast forward to this past week. What happened in mid-October, right after that, the week after he announced that, was the Polygon Protocol Council was announced. And this is 13 individuals from the community that are now going to help contribute to security. They're going to help pass proposals on you know emergency upgrades that need to be made to the network. And it is gonna be responsible for just regular system updates. Um, and I think that this is something that's really important as a component to decentralizing. And you can see that as one of the co-founders steps back, this steps forward and it's a decentralization move is what's really important to note here is the decision makers have been decentralized. Polygon Improvement Proposal 29 or PIP 29 is the Polygon Protocol Council proposal. And a lot of people support this because it is a move to decentralize people from Polygon Labs. Also, Zach XPT, the investigator on Twitter, is also on here. And I followed this very closely as it went live because having all of these different signers on this committee, basically, or the council that are gonna be part of this, it is a really empowering part. It's like politics, basically. It's a democracy where these people are put in power, they're well-known in the community. And I'm gonna go through the rationale as to how these people were picked. So the first one is the eco ecosystem reputation in Ethereum and the L2 and just Web3 in general. So all of these people are well known. They're either publishers or founders or people that have big conferences and influencers in the space that have really contributed a lot towards education. Resilient nature. So these people are, you know, operationally resilient and it means that they have a lot of diversity organizationally and their identification is very different. So they can cover a lot of different bases. And diversity is a strength in a council like this, where people come from different perspectives, they bring different things to the table, and they contribute different components to, let's say, a emergency upgrade. Some people are gonna push back, some people are gonna say this needs to happen, and there's gonna be a great debate that happens on the council. So self-limitation of influence by Polygon Labs. No, so this is a, a very important part here, where Polygon Labs, is the biggest developer of the Polygon network. They have been since you know it started. And what's important to know is they didn't want to have too much of an influence over the council, which I think is a brilliant move. It does show an authenticity to the decentralization move that they're making. 
and it is a way to say we're we're only going to have you know uh, a small amount two people on out of the 13 that are from polygon labs and these are people that are you know developers and very focused on the actual infrastructure so i think that was really important that no entity should hold a wide sway over the de decision making of the protocol council and i think that's a very very important part to this technical and governance ability so they need to be able to demonstrate a level of technical security and governance competence to perform their duties. So you don't just want some random journalist being the person that's approving emergency security protocol updates and things like that. You need to be able to have a uh, background and technical chops to do this. And it is a, uh, they will be able to add or remove members at a seven out of 13 consensus with a 10 day time lock. So if somebody goes off the rails, is just completely against everything and is counterproductive, they can vote them out or add someone at a vote of seven out of 13 people on the council. So very cool that they have set this up. Non-emergency changes are facilitated by a seven uh, out of 13 vote. So 55% of the consensus uh, for maximum efficiency with a time lock of 10 days, just like adding or removing somebody. And I think that it is a, uh, a really great way of, of setting this up. There needs to be an overwhelming majority to basically lead to any conclusion, which is, which is very powerful. And there is a couple of updates that I want to talk about after this around Paul or P-O-L. So what's crazy is that Polygon initially has 10 people listed as co-founders of Polygon, which I think is a cool way of saying like there were a ton of people that jump started the project in 2017. And I like that approach. And now they've pushed it even further to decentralizing with people from the Ethereum Foundation and Polygon Labs and all these different diverse individuals on this 13 person protocol council. I think it's a really cool and bold move. Uh, and it should be widely respected in the space because it is decentralizing. And I've been following this so closely. I, I love that they did it. It's a power move to say we are co-founders that, you know, our, our whales are stepping back and the community is going to drive this thing forward to Polygon 2.0. PIP 18 or the Polygon Improvement Proposal number 18. It's Polygon 2.0. And quickly here, I wanted to go over what POL is. So the core of this proposal goes through the initiation of the POL upgrade, the upgrade from Matic to POL as the native gas token for proof of stake, the adoption of POL as the staking token of Polygon. That's very important to know that in the future, what's going to happen here is the staking layer and the migration of Polygon's public chains will be moving towards POL. So when you get rewards, they're not going to be in Matic, they're going to be in POL token. So they want this to interconnect the ZK powered layer two chains and on aggregate expand the uh, Ethereum block space, create the value layer of the internet. So this is a way so that they can get towards that value layer of the internet vision and getting there, they need ZK technology to do that, to make these transactions extremely inexpensive and it, it needs to happen. So I like that it is kind of proposing the next step in the journey to get to Polygon 2. And this is phase zero where the ZK EVM chains uh, are in beta technically and they give this whole staking layer roadmap where it's initiate the POL upgrade, POL gas on the proof of stake, staking layer, and the POL staking. So that sounds like a different language to you. Then it's important to just know there is the technical part of Matic, which is the current token that represents Polygon. It used to be the Matic network. Then they rebranded to Polygon. And now the upgrade of their gas token, Paul or POL, is going to help with changing um, the withdrawal logic with POL. It's gonna make staking a lot easier because it has its own native staking token and the validator rewards are shifting from Matic to POL. So a lot of big things in this proposal for PIP 18. I think that it is really cool to see that they're doing it in phases. This doesn't affect anything with Matic. Um, it's important to know that. This is more of the backend technical upgrade. So this is all about a multi-phased upgrade to the Polygon ecosystem. And not only was the council a huge update because the co-founder stepped down a week later, they announced the 13 person protocol council, huge step in the right direction towards decentralizing the whole protocol. And on top of that, they released this, basically a roadmap of 2.0, what it's gonna take to get to Polygon 2.0 and how this multi-phased uh, project is going to work. I'm going to be following this very closely as more updates come out because this is a big deal when the biggest L2 on top of Ethereum has something like this where a council is going to be really helping with updates. And there is this new phase zero all the way up to 
uh, Polygon 2.0 is very exciting. It's the next frontier of Polygon. I believe that this is a very underrepresented technology here. The ZK powered L2 chains are something that can help with interoperability. They're gonna just help in a unified block space across all of Polygon chains. And it's gonna help with all the developers at different skill levels get involved in this. And I think that it's such a cool way that they're laying this out with the phases. And that is it for this video. Slap a like if you wanna see more Polygon content on the channel. And I will see you here on the next episode of Hack Crypto.